Good evening fellow VBA programmers. Good to see you all again. Today I'm going to do a tutorial or more to the point a demonstration of the VBA collection object. If you don't know what the collection object is then you're about to find out. If you do know what it is and you know how to use it then this tutorial is not for you. If you know what it is but can't quite get your head around it and then this tutorial is just for you. Okay so the collection object what is it? Okay. Collection object is an ordered list of items which can be accessed as a unit or more to the point referred to as a unit. Okay. Inside the collection object you have an add method, a remove method, an item property and a count property. Add allows you to add items and objects to your collection. Remove clearly does the opposite which is to remove the items that you've added. Item is the item itself that you've added to the collection and the count property is the number of items that currently reside within the collection. An example of the syntax is as follows. Our ob we declare our object collection Okay, in this particular case we've created a collection object and we've named it object. And then we can refer to the method to add an item using the dot notation. And then we add the item itself followed by a comma separator other the key. Now that's normally all you need to do. Oh, that would work fine and it will add your item to the collection using the key name you specify. And the before and the after are optional uh, operators which you can use to insert your item before or after uh, a, a, an item which currently resides within the collection. The item can be of any type although um, it's probably not ideal to mix and match your types makes accessing them a bit difficult um, but you can and that's exactly what I'm going to do in this demonstration uh, just to show you that you can mix and match the types. The key uh, is just an index or an ID more of an identifier to your item type so it's a little bit like uh, the dictionary in C sharp if you're familiar with this C sharp dictionary. You put your item in and then you give it a name which is your key and the key must be type string and then you've got your before and your after instructions which will insert the new item before the specified item or, or insert the new item after the specified item. Okay so the next task is going to be to uh, create some variables and then to assign these variables um, some parameter values. So the first line of code that I've created here dimensions a collection object and we've given it a, the, unique, the unique name of our collection. Here we've dimensioned up some integer, a string, uh, object array called variant, and then uh, class. Okay, and uh, here's a class that I've created earlier. Hopefully, you know how to create a class. If you don't, you right click the solutions window, insert class module, and then inside your class, class module, you can put some methods or properties or whatnot in there. I'm not going to go through that now for this uh, demonstration. Uh, wouldn't go through classes. Uh, in fact, I've, I've done a tutorial already on classes in a, in a previous VBA tutorial, so feel free to refer to that. And uh, the next job is to actually assign some values to these variables. So here we've assigned 69, which is an integer, to our integer variable, and then 69 as a string to our string. And we've actually created an array and then pre-initialized it with values 3, 4, 5 and 8 and assigned that to our array object here and then we've created a new class and basically uh, assigned the value or the string value boo to the property that we created with inside our class. So this is our demonstration data. Very straightforward, hopefully nothing too confusing in there. Now our exercise is to actually add all of these variables to our collection object. Okay. Now to do this we are going to use the add method within the collections object. So here's a bit of code that I've 
popped up earlier on we're going to use the with method which just makes um, life a little bit easier for us saves us having to type out a collection object each time we want to add something so we'll do with our collection and then we'll just use the dot operator and the add method to add our items so the first one is going to be the integer and we're going to give it a key value string called integer uh, just to try and make it a little bit more intuitive for you to follow along with and then we're going to add our string we've given out the key value string but these keys can be any string value you so wish um, but here we've actually added an additional parameter which is the um, integer key value which you've already entered now if you can remember at the top here we said that we can uh, when we talked about the actual syntax for this uh, we can actually add an item before or after so we've got the item the key and then we have the before and then we have the after okay so if you look at the program flow here we've added our string comma integer that's up before before comes before after so stick me before the integer okay so what this is actually going to do is insert the string before our integer item so inside the collection the first item we come across now is going to be our string followed by our integer the third item that we add is our array and then the fourth item we add is the class but now you'll see we have a comma comma so we've actually jumped over the before and we've now gone into the after so we're instructing the add method to add our string sorry to add our class object after our string object and we'll see how that lays out or uh, how that uh, unfolds with inside the uh, collection object when we dump it to our immediate window for now though what we'll do is we will use a watch right click our collection and then add watch and then look down in our watch window and run the program just to see what's going on we'll expand our collection and you can see the four items in here we have our string we have item 2 which is our class we have item 3 which is our integer and item 4 which is our array all initialized nicely to 3, 4, 5 and 8 as expected remember up here we told our collection to add our class after the string and our string our string is 69 and so if you look down here you'll see our string 69 and after that is our class okay so it's worked exactly as expected okay so the next thing I would like to do is to write a method for emptying the contents of our collection to the immediate window okay so I'm going to write a method called dump the collection and in it we're going to pass our collection object okay so rather than have you sit and watch me type this out I've created it and pasted it for you okay so we've called the method dump collection and uh, in it we're passing our collection as a collection object next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually use the for each loop to iterate over our collection so to do that the item that we're going to our, our, our item name is actually a variant um, so for this to work properly we need to dimension up the item name which is going to be our collection item which we wish to extract from our collection and we're going to define it as a variant type next thing we want to do is print our collection count so this is just demonstrating the actual count um, property with inside of our collection and this will show the number four because we know we've got four items within our collection we pop in a couch turn them line feed to make things a little bit easier for us to see on the screen and then we go through over through our for each loop okay so for each our collection item inside our collection check the variable type and if the variable type is a string print our string onto the screen else if our variable type is an object print the class to the screen else if our variable type is an integer print the integer to the screen and if it's none of the above then it's got to be one of our array uh, uh, objects and so with that in mind we will then specify the collection item followed by parentheses and the two which will extract item three from our array looks a bit messy I know um, but this is what I was saying earlier on it's not recommended that we mix our types within the collection because it makes iterating over them and extracting them a little bit more tricky 
Um, so as you can see here, I'm able to check each of the variable types to make sure that I can get the right type out and actually get it dumped to the screen uh, as expected. Okay, so let's run this up and see what we get. Okay, so here's our immediate window. Here's the item count, number four, which is put out by this particular command here. And then our for each loop has put out 69 being our string, the class object, property, string, boo, the integer, and the third element in our array. Okay, so let's clear our immediate window. It's also uh, interesting to note that you can actually get um, the item out by explicitly referencing the item name, or the, the key, sorry, the key name. So for example, we can use the collection, our collection, um, and then the item property followed by the key name being string in this example. So this will actually return the string and dump the string into the immediate window. And again, class item class. So this will actually retrieve our class object from the cla from the uh, collection, um, and then call the demo property, and then put that into the immediate window. Um, okay, so we'll do that. Uh, let me comment out our dump the collection. Let me know that works. We want to see that again. And let's run her up. Okay, there we go. 69 and boo. Okay, so that's just called these two debugs up, debug prints, and printed the two item names from the collection to the screen in our immediate window by explicitly referencing the key value as opposed to iterating over the collection as we did here um, and then extracting them in the for each loop. Okay, so all that's left to do now is to demonstrate the remove method, and in this example, we're going to remove our string item and then we're going to call our dump the collection again and we're going to see that the string item is removed all being well so let's stop the program rerun the program okay and then look on the screen and as expected you can see down here we've only got three items the fourth one has been removed the fourth one being the string item okay so that really is about it not at all difficult okay so I hope you found that little demonstration of VBA collection object helpful and uh, until the next one, ta-da for now.